Hello, it's me, Becky Blees. Thank you for tuning in with us today. Now, in this next hour, we've got a great hour. We've got the one and only Emma is back with us. I always do that because she stood there to me and I'm like, oh, there's Emma. Um, Emma's going to be doing, she's got her own design um, of her Hawaiian quilting, uh, which is just absolutely great it's, it's brand new to me this it's a completely it's a complete new technique this is to me as well we've got a still of this so we can just show you what we're going to be doing here um it's a real sort of distinctive quilting style this um of the hawaiian islands that it uses a large symmetric applique pattern um and it is just absolutely stunning we've got three different colorways for you to use a pick from today whether you want to just use it for a piece on its own you might use it as a centerpiece for a quilt a wall hanging um, it's entirely up to you but we're having a chat with emma about that earlier um so i'll I'll talk to you about that in a little bit but here are the three sets that you've got in here three kits that you've got um a total you've got two and a half meters of fabric two meters sorry of fabric a meter of each and it's down to you what you want whether you want the blue the blue the green or the red now this design here emma has designed it herself exclusively for the sewing quarter so nowhere else it's just designed exclusively here for us so should we have a look let's look at the green should we do the blue one first Okay, so in the kit, you're getting your two bonder webs because a lot of this is all about using your bonder webs. So you're going to be using a lot of bonder web, uh, and again, Emma will be showing you that. You've got your two threads in there, your blue and your white, and then look at this fabric. I'm trying to work out which one. I, I think this one's my favourite, actually, the blue. There you go. It's like that gorgeous, a metre of that leaf fabric. Now, you've got enough to make one you'll have a bit left over but you won't have enough to make two if that makes sense so you're using it a lot of the time it's just with this design as well this uh, hawaiian quilting it uses two colors you can um it's, we use a, we've got a white background here but emma was saying that some people use bright backgrounds as well but I, uh, for this project we've got it We've got the white and we've also got the blue on here. Um, she has designed this herself. You're getting obviously all the full instructions, step-by-step -step instructions on what to do, how to use it. Kahiko Quercus kit. I love that name. I love the way Emma says it as well. So I'm going to be asking her loads of I love Emma, I love Emma's accent. I think it's amazing. Um, so what I love with this, now, again, I'll be asking, I don't want to spoil it too much, but I'll ask Emma as well where she's got her the design from. I'm giving too much away. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait for that I've been like because I've been really interested in this project so um here we go we've got the green one that you've got here now so it's literally a choice so you've got that lovely like lime fresh green there really bright really vibrant oh that looks nice so you've got a meter of each and then of course as well you've got your two packs of the iron-on bonder web and then with that you've got your thread so you've got your green and your white thread there Eco Quirkus kit. There you go. And we've got the instructions. So again, Emma's going to talk it through. And what's great with this project is because Emma, Emma's obviously demonstrating it, you'll be able to watch it back if you've got any questions or anything like that. Um, so you can see all on the screen, that's what you get. And then we've got the red. The last one is the red. Nice, nice. You've got the roses on there, really nice sort of rose print there. So again, you've got a meter of the red and you've got a meter of the white ivory. And of course, you've got your two threads. And you've got your bondo web as well. This is a really nice kit. And of course, you've got your instructions as well. And again, like we're saying, the instructions is all step by step. There's Emma Bradford down there. Nice little picture of her. So is it something different? It could be that you might not have done the Hawaiian quilting before. You might not have done this technique before. Because um, from what I've seen, it is for me it's completely different to what i've seen before and again there's different ways for this one you can use you can hand stitch with it or you can use a machine as well um so we're going to be talking all that through with emma so can we go over and see emma now do i take my oh, the instructions over there right let's go over and have a little look emma hello how are you, how are you? i'm good how are you lovely to see you you too happy new year happy new year we yes. can keep saying that because i've not seen you since christmas no. <laughs> <laughs> i think we're good to the end of january first time you see somebody i think you're good yeah and then you've got to have a cut off yeah yeah it's not right yeah. in june if you're still saying happy new no. year is it? <laughs> right this is completely different it isn't is. it um yeah. You've designed, first of all, Hawaiian quilting. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the Hawaiian quilting then. Um, so Hawaiian quilting is, it's a very different technique. Mm -hmm. um, so you usually, well, you usually only use two fabrics, yeah. two different coloured fabrics. And the way that you make the design is that you like you're making a snowflake. 
Right, yes. So tr the very traditional way of doing it is you would take one of your fabrics mm -hmm. uh, and fold it into eighths. So fold it in half, then quarter, and then again. So yeah. you've got a, um, a triangle shape, yeah. basically. And then you trace your design onto that piece of fabric, cut it out like you would a snowflake, and then when you open it up, you've got your pattern. Right. Um, it doesn't always work that way. It though, doesn't does always it? work that way. <laughs> so if you've got a big quilt, it probably won't match so much, but because this is quite a small design, yeah. if you do that, the way that you're folding your fabric, because there's folds in there, not all of your pieces are going to be absolutely symmetrical when you fold it out, okay. which is not a problem, because no. that's a very organic way of doing it, and it looks organic. Yeah. Uh, and probably nobody would notice that there's any bit missing, or not missing, but misaligned. Yes, yeah. Rather than yourself, but... I, to keep it very accurate, I like to do it one sliver at a time. Yes. So. Okay. Right. Where do we start? So we need to start. So the pattern itself, um, I designed it for. It's a small quilt. Yeah. So it was designed to go into a um, like a mobile quilt show. Yes. Like you were talking about this earlier, yeah. isn't it? Like, is it a suitcase show? Yeah, it's called I a suitcase. Them. Yeah, suitcase collection, yeah. which means all the quilts fit into a suitcase. Right. And then they go to wherever groups want to, you know, show them. And you have like a little mini um, quilt show yeah. at your group. Ah, and so it's all 36 inches square. The theme that we had to design on was celebrating tradition. Yeah. Now, Hawaiian quilting was one that I... It's one of those techniques that I've got a list of quilts in my mind. That yes. I'm like, okay, I want to do that one, I want to yeah. do that one. And this was always on my list. But it's a lot to take on one big one at yes. once, or a big quilt yes. at once. Yeah, can you and there's a lot of sewing to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I did it as, as a small one. Which is lovely. Just now, to get a little taster. You designed this yourself, didn't mm -hmm. you? And what's the inspiration that you used for this? Because I love the leaves, the leaf yes. designs. Well, I, I love oaks anyway. So because it was celebrated tradition, I wanted to do a very traditional quilting method. But this is rather English traditional English pattern with the yes. oak leaves and the acorns and the pomegranate. Ah, that's so that I was love. combining the two. Because usually a Hawaiian quilt is a lot more tropical. So you have like tropical flowers or pineapples. Yes, or, I've seen the pineapple yeah, yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah, things like that. So I wanted it to be quite, quite English. Yeah, and I love yeah. it. And we can see on the wall just behind mm -hmm. us here, you've got your two different ones yeah, there. Yeah, so this is the is original. Yeah. One. This one, I love the way this one came out. My husband actually, he looked like, oh, I really like that one. Yeah, I love the blues and that. I see yeah. that the fabric over there that I love that. So that's what you're going to, that's the finished. Yes, that's the finished project. size and that's yes. the finished one. What is good about it, so it'll give you a nice taster. If you've never done Hawaiian before, right. it gives you a nice small project to work on to give you a taster to see if you actually like it or not. Yeah. If you do really like it, you can actually just use this as a medallion in your quilt yes. and then add borders to it. Or you can just have it as a, as a wall hanging and just say, okay, I've done Hawaiian I've done, quilting. Yeah. And Tick it off yeah, the list. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It looks very technical, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. Is it? It's not as bad. It's, it's a little not, bit yeah. fiddly. It just okay. take your time. But it's actually not, technically, it's not too bad. So the first step that we do, so you've got your two fabrics. So you take your top fabric. So yeah. you so you've all got whites as your so you've background. Got white as a background. So you'll yeah. take your coloured fabric and you cover the whole back with bonder web. Okay, and it's a bonder web that you get in your kit as it well. Is. Isn't it is, yeah, so that's what I've that. used. And so your because your bonder web will come in strips, um, you just do one strip across yeah. and then butt them up. And the last bit you can see I've kind of patched it together like a jigsaw. Just yes, I was going to cover. ask on that because it is, is it just it doesn't matter, does it? it doesn't you can matter. just kind of yeah. You just want Put to fill in. the back of it exactly it the best way possible. Yep. And then your pattern, you've got a couple of templates. Mm -hmm. So this is your main design template, and I've used quite thin template plastic. I think one you've got online. Is yes, there nice. is one. Oh, yeah, there's one right there. Uh, ah, it's right here, yeah. No, the one oh, that, yeah. Go. It's a lot thicker, so it's nice and substantial. Yes. This is quite limited, though, and um, so if you want that, you can add that into your basket. Yeah, um, it's, it's lovely because you can see straight through it to, yes. to trace. And very it's very firm, so we've got to use that again. It's actually prime, uh, prim transparent creative sheets there so if you want that add that into your basket that's a handy that'd be a nice yeah, guide for you mm -hmm. so you mark your template onto your template plastic and obviously yeah. cut it out get that in there i love this i'm fascinated i'm yeah. following okay. along <laughs> um first thing you do so you've got your bond web on the back yeah first thing i did was i drew a line um diagonally and vertically and then both diagonal okay. just to give me somewhere um, to 
refer back to. So those yeah. that will give you your eight segments of your pattern. Repeat. Right. That makes sense already yeah. then. So you're splitting okay. it up into... Yeah. So in the middle, you can't see it now because I've taken it off, but you will have a, a cross section in the middle where all your lines cross yeah. that you'll be able to line up your template pattern with. Yeah, because I always think, where do you start? <laughs> yeah. So that's a good prep, yeah. get it Find all the middle, out, draw, yeah, it, out, draw yeah. it all out. Uh, so you just use your lines to, as your guide to, of where to place your template. You start tracing it out. You do one side, and then because you're going to do the next section, you have to flip it over because it's oh, going to be a right. mirror image. Okay, I'm with you. Yeah, so you just line up in the middle. You line up to your edge to make sure that your pattern uh, is going to match there. Yeah. And so you just draw it up and you continue draw. eight times yeah. all the way around. So you draw it all out first before you yes. start cutting or anything. So you draw exactly. it out eight times. Obviously, I've already started cutting and taking some paper away on here. But yeah. this is what you'll end up like is your bond web across the back and all your pattern drawn out yes. on the back. I think because that's when you look, it looks like loads, isn't it? When yeah. you see the pattern drawn out, you think, <gasps> yeah. but it's all OK. <laughs> it is. And also because it's one piece of fabric, you've got no seams. Ah. So there's no piecing. Yes. Yeah to do on this one right um, you also have a, a template for the middle okay yes I was gonna ask you about the yes. middle. so there's two ways of doing this the originally the, the first one I did this one <laughs> I actually cut it out at this point as well so I marked it and cut it out and yeah. you also you have to keep there's a little square in the middle that is not attached to anything so make sure you save okay save that bit um, what well, I've, I've left it like this because after I put it all together or so I iron it down I found yeah. it was actually easier if I waited and left this solid okay and then um, marked it and cut it out after it's actually on the background right okay so I'll do that today yeah right. you've got two options for the applique right so the first option uh, that's in the instructions is hand a uh, needle turn oh yes because I was gonna say you can do it with a hand yeah. with a hand stitch yes right. and the original one was all Hand needle hand turn, stitch, wasn't it? yeah, and then the second one was all with a, a blanket stitch around the raw edge. Ah, right. Yeah. Okay, we've got a close up there, so you can see. So that one you've seen on the screen there, that's hand stitched, and then the blue one, close up. That one was done on the machine with a blanket stitch. There we go. Right. Which one would you prefer? Which way around would you prefer to do it? Um, or? I like them both actually, yeah. and it all depends. One what your confident skill level is <coughs> so i'd say the easiest is probably um the blanket stitch yeah. over applique um and also how much time you want to take because there's, there's a couple of schools of thought there's the you know enjoy the process yes school of thought where take it easy and slow uh, in that case, the needle turn is very satisfying because it's something you've done all by hand. Yes. And you've got a lot of control over it. Not that you don't have control over the other way, but it's something you can sit and enjoy, yes. basically. Um, so it all depends, one, how quickly you want to get it done. Yes. <laughs> and two, how much time you want to spend on it, yes. basically. And personal preference, what you prefer. Yeah, and the, the finished technique. So obviously, if you're hand piecing it, you won't have the blanket stitch around the edge. No. It'll just be a... You won't have that. Yeah. So there you get the options. It's entirely up to yeah. you what you want to do. Right. So you've drawn it all out. Draw it out. Then you start cutting it. Right. How, I know it sounds silly. You've got scissors in your hand. I can yeah. see. So you, obviously we're using scissors yes, to cut it out. Yes. It's all scissors. Um, definitely sharp pair. Um, short, pointy, handy, just because you've got a lot of little bits to get yes, into. Yes, you have. So this one I've cut out directly on the uh, marking line. Okay. That one I would do with a blanket stitch. So right. that's the method you would use if you were going to use the blanket stitch. Okay. If you were going to do a hand applique, you need to include a quarter of an inch, roughly, seam allowance around your shape. Oh, yes, obviously. Right. Yeah, so that's what I've done here. So you would cut, roughly cut a quarter of an inch all the way around your shape, mm -hmm. and then you would go back in and cut directly on your line so that you've got your pattern. Right. So you've got that. We've got the um, scissors on the screen. If you needed some um, embroidery curve scissors, they're 10 centimetre, four inch ones. Um, Paul's just put them on the screen. So okay. if you wanted some, if you've not got them in your collection. <coughs> now, for the needle turn applique, what I did is I prepared all of my curves before I actually applied it to the um, background. Yes. Because a lot of times you can, you can just add it or machine based it or sewing based it to right. your background okay. and then turn it as you go. I found it was easier to get, take care of all my curves before yes. I got to that point. 
That's what we want. Take care yeah. of your kids. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So for the convex curves, yeah. it's tricky to get the curves completely round. Okay. On applique. Yeah. Because if you're turning it under, you'll sometimes get a little uh, straight line with a corner, straight line with a corner. Yeah. So in order to get around that, a little trick, is that, that you can actually do a little running stitch, a little hand running stitch in your seam allowance. Oh, right. Ah. Actually just around the curved bit. And then you pull it I'll around. Just just pull it in, won't yeah. it? Yeah. And it makes it a nice, even, uh, rounded curve. Oh, nice rounded edge. Yeah. Ah, so there we go. There's a little tip for you. Yeah. And I use this trick for any time I've got to do um, curves. Yeah. So sometimes when I'm doing jersey, I've got a, sometimes on t-shirts you have a rounded hemline. Yes. Yeah. Of course. I use that trick on that as well. It's a handy little trick that to know yeah. actually. I like that you can one. See I'm remembering finger. that. <laughs> so I mean, don't know if you can get a close up, but I've yeah, done a little running stitch. Yeah. So I'm just going to pull that in, and you see it just curves in really nicely. So it's all nice and yeah. neat. And you can. If you've got a little iron, a little um, mini, mini, mini iron, yeah. you could do a little clover press, but just finger press that in. Yeah. Do you want me to press it? Oh, no, it'll be okay. Because you, you will press it afterwards, but it's just to get it tight. Get it in, yeah. So it looks like a little, little Suffolk puff. It's cute, isn't it? It yeah. just pulls it in nicely. And I just do a couple of little back stitches to keep it in. So I start off with a knot. Yeah. And then I just do a little back stitch. Oh, right. Would this be a good project for a beginner? Um, it would be. Yeah, because it is completely different. Isn't it, it is to completely the other? different. Yeah. If you were a beginner, you've never done it before, definitely do the blanket stitch yeah. rather than the hand turn hand, applique. Yeah. Hand turn applique, I'd say, for more confident yeah. hand quilters or yeah. people who are, who are used to doing things by hand. Because you, you'll have some spots if you're turning it under, where you don't have exactly a quarter of an inch seam Ah, allowance. okay, so you need to be, yeah. Yeah, because there are some, some places where, the, like here, for instance. That's quite tight, It is it? quite tight, yeah. so you'll have just barely enough seam allowance on either side. Oh, yeah. Yep, and then what I did on those bits was when I was hand appliquing them down, I just did a few more stitches closer together. Oh, right, okay. Just to keep it under. Yeah, but no, this nice. definitely, definitely, if you've never done high applique before, I'd definitely do the blanket yeah. stitch method. Uh, so that's for the hand stitching. It's something nice and different to try as well. You know, if you mm -hmm. do normal quilting and things, it's nice yeah. to try something different. a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And it's really effective. So I keep going over it because mm -hmm. I love just the finish. I love that detailing of it, the motif and everything on there. I just love it. I think it's yeah. beautiful. Lovely wall hanging Thank as you. well. Yeah, I really like the way it came out. Like I said, my husband was looking at it last night because he saw the, the blue one when it was all finished. He's like, oh, yeah. I really, really like that. Oh, I think it's lovely. Right. So I've got my background, yep. and I've just cut it to about 25 inch square. Okay. You'll cut it down afterwards, but yes. this is my background. Background already. I'm going to find my middle. You don't have to, um, you can mark it if you'd like to with a friction pen or something. Yeah. But I usually just... You're a pro. Yeah, well, <laughs> <You know. laughs> I am of the school of thought of um, doing things easier yes so you I, like things easier. yeah <laughs> we watched the gino de campo gino and gordon and yes yeah yes. and his his idea was what is it less i can't remember you should, i remember this idea yeah, less, is, not, less is more less is mm -hmm. something. yeah so you're gino de campo yeah <laughs> less work more enjoyment that's like that. yes yeah so i'm just finger pressing it so you can see there's a line so, yeah just cross line and that's just so I can roughly line up my pattern. Oh, wow. I've not seen it in the green. That looks gorgeous against the white. And you do end up with it. You take the papers off, obviously. And you do end yeah. up with a little bit of spaghetti that you have to sort out. Yeah. But just take your time. <gasps> just lay it out. And it, because it's all one piece of fabric, it'll just lay. Once it, you lay it out flat, it'll just lay how it wants to go. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. The colour on this is well. I really like this green. Yeah, it's nice. It's very vibrant. Green so far is the most popular. 
There we go. So as yeah. they, I'll just show you the kit on the screen. There. So you're getting two lots of the bond web. You're getting two meters of fabric. So on this one, you're getting the green, and then you're getting the white as well, a meter of each. You've got your green and your white thread, and you've also got your step-by-step -step instructions, and they've got the template in it as well. And this has been designed by Emma as well. Emma's designed this exclusive for us here at the Sewing yeah. Quarter. Yeah. Uh, the fabric, sorry, it's not white, it's ivory that you've got in here yeah. as well. Ivory. Love right, it. obviously that. you would cut all the rest of your pan yes. out before you did this part. But the next step, let's go a couple here, is lay it out. And you can just pin put it. a pin, yeah, pin here and there, because it does lay quite flat. Yes, it does actually. All, it's yeah. gone on easier than I thought. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah, it does. Once you lay it out, it's actually, it looks like a big spaghetti mess, you know, <laughs> but... Yeah. And like I said, you know with the bond web that you just peel, peel mm -hmm. that off, don't you? Yeah, yep, you just peel that off. Um, obviously, if you're going to hand do the hand applique, don't peel that off until no, you've until got you've those. Finished, yeah, yeah, you've got to finish all those curves. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, that would take a while, wouldn't it? Yeah. <coughs> now this is the point. Uh, let's see. Oh, actually, let's wow. press it first because I'm going to use the friction pen to mark the okay. middle. Okay. And I don't want to do that before we iron. No. So I'm just going to pin it down. To open up the mat. Oh, Anne in Cheshire's messaged in. Hi, Anne. Oh, she messaged me on Facebook, Anne. Oh. I always waved her on the M6. Um, she says, hi, ladies. Brilliant tips, Emma. Oh, um, thank so you. So there we go. Thank you, Anne, for messaging him. And yeah. hi. <laughs> and no. to put a name to her face. <laughs> so what the pinning also helps with is, obviously, if we, you wouldn't normally have a... Well, you could put a towel or something heat-resistant on your yeah. table and press it on like that if you've got something. Or if you have to move it to your ironing, ironing board. board yeah. yeah, pinning it down. and firm. Yeah. So it doesn't move while you're transferring it, basically. Yes. It's a really nice feel to it, the fabric. Is. Yes. Well, the batik is actually particularly nice for applique. Yeah. Because it has a tighter weave. I was going to say, it's tighter. Yeah. It's not as flim as the word flimsy it no, feels sometimes. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't have a loose weave. So it really makes it really nice for applique because those raw edges don't fray nearly as much. No. So that's another, that's another reason I actually used um, batik on the original one as well. There you go. So you've got your mini iron. Yeah, my mini iron. They're really handy as well, mini irons, aren't they? Even if you know if you're travelling around and yes. things as well, aren't they? Yes. I do a lot of travel and it's nice just to know that if I have to, I I try not to buy clothes that need ironing. No, I well you don't want to try that as well. <laughs> so I just wear them creeps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you really have to. Yeah. Minimum the worst. <laughs> Even when you iron it and you put it on, it creases. It does. You just look at it and it creases. Yeah. But I do love uh, linen in the summertime. Last year, last summer, I think I pretty much lived in linen. Yeah. Do you know, I think so a lot of people did, didn't they? Because it was yeah. so warm. Hopefully this year we'll all have to do the same. Yes. That'd be lovely. So you're just pressing that, so that just all puts it into yep. place. And it just keeps the bond web, just keeps the, the pattern in place. Obviously, if you hadn't used the bond web, you can do it without the bond web, mm -hmm. but this part is going to be, as you imagine, a lot trickier. So you'll have a lot more pins yeah. because you'd have to p make sure that none of it moves while you're, uh, you're sewing yeah. it, basically. And you don't want to be running them over. And no. Although, if I remember right, you do, don't you? <laughs> yes, I do. But I, t I try to use dressmaker's pins yes. that are quite thin. Yeah. Um, because sometimes in, when you're quilting and you really want to get a piece that to match the corners yeah I think yeah, it has to be done yeah doesn't I it? do it very carefully I will have to admit I don't recommend it but I do <laughs> do it myself each, each to their own yeah <laughs> they get if you are after the iron uh, we've got the prim mini steam iron there that's 39.99 as I say it's a really handy little gadget so not just for your projects but if you was it if you're going on holiday as yeah, well yeah, actually, yeah. isn't it yeah be like, don't let the family use it. They'll be like, it's mine. <laughs> Actually, saying that, I tend to be the well. My husband is usually the one that breaks the irons because he, oh, he drops them on the floor or oh, he knocks them off. Oh. Yeah, so he has to buy new irons. But I tend to <laughs> ruin the bottoms <laughs> from <laughs> ironing things I shouldn't or mining over my. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing I ironed once was a swimming costume. Don't even ask me. Oh, like I was young and I thought I was oh. doing. I was being good. Uh, I got told off because I shouldn't have got the iron out, and mm -hmm. I yeah. Uh, I earned my sister's swimming costume. Oops. She couldn't go swimming. No. <laughs> Oops. No. <laughs> so this is my centerpiece. I'm just going to line it up. Okay. And you just mark through. And you're just using... Um, using a friction pen. Friction pen. Yep. So this is one that will disappear when you iron it or apply heat to it. Okay. It doesn't matter what colour you use because it will go away. Yeah. It's just one that you can use to see. 
I like how you've outlined your template in black oh. there as well, so you can see <laughs> yeah. it. I don't know if you did that for the purpose of the telly or just... Oh, well, um, I like that, because yeah. for me, drawing round, especially with me with my eyes, that actually you can actually see it a bit yeah. clearer. That was the marker pen that I used to go on the template. It makes it nice, because it's got a nice, thick um, nib. Yeah. There and we go. So that's the handy tip for you yeah. as well. When you're doing out your, your stencils and mm -hmm. things, you might want to use a dark, a black pen or something around it so you can see your template then. Not on your fabric. <laughs> no. If you do need to remove any marks from your template, you can just use, if you're using a marker pen, you can just use some nail polish remover. Oh, that's right a off. handy tip. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to go through, do this bit as well. So we'll cut some out. Got lots of new callers coming in for this project as well. This is what's really nice with this is it's something completely different. Um, and it is, it's different. It's, it's interpreting that obviously the quilting skills and things, but it's something completely different. It's bringing applique in mm -hmm. and it's just something different. It is, yeah. That's my bit in the middle. Then you just very carefully using your scissors. This part you Ooh. actually cut, you want the white to be revealed. Okay, oh right, okay. Yeah. So I'm actually gonna cut straight into my little acorns. Could you use duckbill scissors? Maybe. Um, I find it easier to use these. These ones, yeah. Um, That's just fine. because you've got a nice point on them. Yeah. And they they get into. I suppose the, what you want. You want that point on them, yeah. don't you? You want to be to able really to get into it is some tight bits. little yeah. areas to get into. <laughs> and there's the scissors for scars. Yeah. Just make sure you only use them for fabric. Just only use them for fabric. Oh. <laughs> I think we had this discussion that if anybody uses my fabric scissors for anything else, they have to buy me new ones. Yes, I can imagine, and I can imagine that's a lot That's a lot of people's problems in their homes, isn't it? Where people take things, I can imagine, especially daughters or mm -hmm. that, decide, oh, I'm going to go and cut out, do some homework and glue and stick and cut out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Scissors always go missing in our house as well. Yes. I don't know where they go. Like with, probably with the socks, mm -hmm. socks and scissors. Yeah, we had the same problem. And then I decided every time I went food shopping, I would buy a new pair of scissors. Oh, I've done that yeah. actually before, yeah. So I've got about three or four now that actually, whenever I need a pair of scissors, I can actually find some. Yeah. Well, they all seem to be together at, in my house now. I found that I had kitchen drawer scissors and I had other scissors that were underneath and oh, I had crafting. Mm -hmm. I had different ones and they just, they still, I don't, I don't know where they go. You even have present scissors, you know, when you're in my wrapping paper. Oh, wow. I keep them, but they still go. <laughs> That's impressive. I have yeah. to admit, I keep all my um, wrapping paper in my airing cupboard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I saw this handy gadget box that's oh, basically yes. the, the length of a roll of wrapping paper. That's a good idea. Just put everything in there. Bows and all, little pockets, no, <laughs> nice. pockets for bows. You can actually make one, actually. You could bind it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. There you go, handy project. <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't cut it all out, but you would cut all the way around that. And again, because the middle square isn't attached to anything, make sure you don't lose that. Right. So you can see, as soon as I press that, the marks disappear. Oh, wow. Now, yeah. do give a little caveat with um, the friction pen. Do a, a um, fabric test beforehand. Oh, yes. Because sometimes... Um, I do have some nice hand dyed fabrics where it does leave a very faint pale, pale mark. Ah, right, okay. Yeah, but because you're going to be cutting out on the line it, it, for this project, it doesn't matter yes. anyway. But if you are going to use it for quilting lines, um, which wouldn't necessarily be the end of the world because you'll be quilting over them anyway, yeah. but just do a little fabric yeah. test. Always check. Oh, imagine if you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can start anywhere. I'm just going to yes. do a blanket stitch around these. Oh, okay. Have you finished with this for now? Yes, so, yeah. thank you. Right, let's have a look a bit at the stitching and then I'll go and recap this. Then. Okay. So you can just start anywhere? Yeah, and I just used a regular flat foot with my flat feet. Foot, I was going to say uh, yeah, flat foot you with used. With my um, feed dogs up. Right. You can do free motion if you want to, but oh, right. it's just as easy to do it like this, to be fair. And I, you've got a nice control. And you just set it on a blanket stitch. Blanket stitch. Yeah. I always put it so that my um, needle is down. So whenever it stops, the needle will be down. OK. If you've got a machine that doesn't do that, before you lift your presser foot or move any, any way, just turn your little handle so that it 
your needle goes okay, down. Okay, right. So you don't miss your spot. Another good tip. Yeah. Oop. And I have my needle in the wrong spot. There we go. And again, it's great because you can adjust it to the speed that you want. Mm -hmm. You can start off slow to get the hang of things. Yep. And I would recommend, I'm using a blanket stitch on here, I recommend playing around with your blanket stitch before you start. Right, yeah. Just to get the length and the width right that you right, want. Yeah. I actually had to um, reduce the width on mine a little bit. Yeah. You see, you do have, with this fabric, you do get spare fabric. You don't get enough to do another one. No. But you've got some spare, so it'd be yes. worth just, especially if this is new to you, mm -hmm. it'd be worth having a play around, wouldn't yeah, it? And just I having agree. a bit of an experiment. Yeah. Rather than thinking, oh, I'll try and make more. <laughs> yeah. And you do have enough of the binding as well. Oh, that's good. And what thread have you used in there? Is that the green one? It's a green one, yeah. so it actually matches. Yes. But you could do a black or a navy or something contrasting. So on the blue one, I actually used a navy to contrast. Yes, yeah, haven't you? So it added, because you've got the pale bits in the blue yeah. fabric, I thought if I added a bit of contrast, it adds a little bit more definition yeah. to it. I suppose, again, yeah. it depends. It's what you fancy, yeah, isn't yeah, it? It's what exactly. is your choice? Because with this kit, you see, you get the green and you also get the cream with that, the ivory yep. wood. Oh, and I meant to say the name, because it's the quilt itself. Yes, yeah. yes the name, where is it from? It's, um, so the name is called Kahiko Quercus. Yes, oh, I love that, I love how you say that. Yeah. <laughs> Kahiko is um, ancient in Hawaiian. Right. And Quercus is the genus name for oaks. So it's a bit... Wow, I love that. Ancient oaks. Yeah. That's brilliant, I love that. I've been promised, we went to Madeira for my 40th birthday. Oh, I love Madeira. It's nice. <gasps> and I've been promised Hawaii for my 50th. Oh, So I've got nice. a little bit to go yet, but oh. I'm definitely holding him to that. Yes. Oh, Hawaii's great. Mm -hmm. Oh, the fabrics that you'll get over there. Mm. Yes. Amazing. I went, I bought, actually, I don't know why I bought. I bought a dress, like a oh, Hawaiian dress. It was yeah. very loud. Oh, um, I wore it as I was working on the ship, so I could wear oh, it for the tropical yeah, yeah, party yeah. night. Um, and I've still got it at home. I don't know where I'd ever wear it to, but <laughs> I just, I love like, it's like a high neck thing. It's just oh, bright. I just, I don't know, lovely. I just loved it. Mm -hmm. um, but then I just thought, wow, the fabrics that you could get over there. Yeah. Oh, it'd be amazing, really nice colours. <laughs> I've just taken an extra suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, so I can see you going round there, too. Yeah, so it's literally just, you just go slow. You just go, go all the way around. Yeah, because some of them could be quite tight, can't it? Like they can. sharp edges and things. And you've got some curves in there, so whenever yeah. you get to a curve, I just lift, make sure my needle's down. Okay, down, but, keeping it down. Yeah, lift my presser foot up and just rotate just the fabric rotate. a little bit. If you... So that's where I used to go around when I was using the machine. I used to pull my fabric too much, which mm. causes problems. Yeah. But that's just, look, luckily I was only having a play, that's one good thing about, like they always say with sewing machines and stuff, you want to spend time getting to know your machine, don't yes, you having a play? Yes, it is definitely good. And I actually, um, I use two different threads in mine. Right. So uh, my machine, I had one thread, you can't see it, but every once in a while, you might see really up close here, mm -hmm. it made a little loop. Oh yeah. And I just changed the thread and it, that problem went completely went away. Oh. Yeah. So it's really getting to know what fabrics, I mean, what threads your machine likes. Also, the needles ah, okay. are good. Um, yeah, just having a bit of time playing. Yeah. I tend to use universal needles at the moment. Oh, right. That's kind of what's on hand. Yeah. But I really like a Microtex okay. machine needle, yeah. which is thinner, especially if I'm sewing batiks. Right. So with the Microtex needle, it's quite a thin needle. Mm -hmm. And with the batiks, because they're such a tight woven fabric, yeah. if you use a, big, a bigger needle, it can actually break the threads. Ah, right, Whereas okay. with the Microtex ones, because they're thinner, they can actually go in between the threads. Oh, right, that's yep. good to know. That's what I do need to do. I need to, as I was saying, well, I've seen there's a few workshops where you can go with your sewing machine, just how to use a sewing yeah. machine, which is what I need to do. Now, while you're just going around there, mm -hmm. I'm just going to do a quick recap over here okay. of the bundles that you've got. I'll be back with you in a moment.
Right, let's have a look at the blue one first. So again, in this, you've got your two packets of Bonda web. Let's have a look. We've got your two threads. Let's open this blue fabric up. You've got a meter. So Emma has created this design exclusively for us here at the Sewing Quarter. Look at that. I love that. Paul says it's his favourite. I have to say it's mine, although while I've seen the green now, I'm torn between the green. It's gorgeous. And I was saying the texture on this as well. Um, the weave's tighter on it, you know, because which makes the plique in a lot easier. Right. Here we go. So you've got in there a metre of the blue and um, you've got a metre of the ivory. You've got your navy and your ivory threads. You've got your two packets of Bonda web and also you've got your instructions as well. Um, I'll show you the instructions in a second because you've got your templates in there as well. I'll show you the green and the red, then I'll show you the instructions. So th there you go, that's the finished piece. And let's do the red one as well, I'll show you the red. The red is completely different. It's like it's got a rose print to it. There you go. Now, you've got a metre of each fabric and like I said, you've got enough um, to make one. You'll have some left over, but you won't have enough to make two. But imagine that in your stash. You know what we were in the previous hour like, about what to do with um, leftover fabrics and things? You could use that in another project. Beautiful. Now, if everyone checks out their baskets, this one is going to be the most popular one. The red. And that one is the most limited. So you do need to start checking out if you do want that one. So again, you've got your ivory, your red. Uh, you've got your threads and your bonder webs. Then you've got the green one now as well. This is the one that um, Emma is demonstrating. So again, look at that. Gorgeous. So you've got a metre of that one, and or a metre of the green, sorry, and you've got a metre of the white. I love the print on here. It's like a tie-dye of a flower, isn't it? I love it. Very nice. So you've got those two, your bonder webs and your threads, and of course all of the kits come with full instructions. This is what Emma designed exclusively for us here at the Sewing Quarter. So she's got here, you've got the front cover. And then we'll have a look inside. Tells you step by step about Emma. A lot of history to Hawaiian quilts as well. Um, it's really nice to sort of bring it to air. <laughs> really popular as well at the moment. I was having a look yesterday online at them. There's loads of them. Um, there's a template that you've got in there. Like Emma said as well, traditional sort of Hawaiian quilts, a lot of the times the, the templates they use can be like big pineapples and things. Um, whereas Emma's designed, it's based on like sort of like the oak trees and things. So um, there you go, it's different with a British twist to it. So we left Emma stitching away. Yep. How are you getting on? Oh wow, Good. it's done loads. Good. So once you get going with it, it actually Yeah. Quite quick in mm -hmm. a way. Not that you want to be rushing, but it is No, a, but it's it's a nice, I would when I did the, this one, I did it in about an eighth or a quarter at a time because okay. you're sitting at your machine for quite a while. And I do have podcasts that keep me occupied. Keep me entertained, yes. Yeah. But nice it's few one cups of tea and coffee. Yes. <laughs> um, but it is nice because it's just a blanket stitch around. You just do a lock, a lock stitch if you need to stop. You don't have to, um, you don't lose your spot. You know, you can just go back to it whenever. Yeah. So that's that part. I do actually have one that I started working on by hand. Okay. And if you want to see a little bit of that. Yes, let's have okay. a look. So this is great now because we've shown you the machine and now this is Emma's one of doing by hand. Yep. So I've got about, oh. it's about halfway done. Yep. Let's see, where's my, my starting point right there. My needle. Ah, so you can see there where you're saying you've done your running stitches. Yes. Taking the curves in. So I've done a running stitch just to curve around the convex ones. Yeah. And then I also I snip um, in where it's going to be concave. Okay. So those will flip underneath as well. Right. So I've started off right here. This is definitely one that you want to sit. Actually, I've been working at the table to do this one whenever yeah. I go to sometimes to quilt group. And ah got a nice table and a cup of tea and ladies to chat with. Oh, lovely. Oh, and a gentleman. We have a gentleman quilt. Oh, do you? Oh, that's too. great. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah oh. actually, um, what was it? 
last year, year before last, I did a beginner quilt group. Yeah. And I had a teenage boy. Did you? Of, yeah, he was doing it oh, as his skill brilliant. as part of the Duke of Edinburgh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he did a big sampler quilt all on his own. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, and then he um, did a quilt as you go. So he did all the blocks and he yeah. did a quilt as you go and finished oh, it up. Oh, wow. Could be a real niche for that, for the um, males out there, gentlemen yeah, and yeah, boys yeah. and that, you know. Definitely. Yeah, learn a skill. And do you know what, as well, it's... it's so handy to have it as a skill as well, isn't it? You can world your voice doing yeah. it all. You can do all sorts. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Fix things, make things, do projects. Yeah. And it is therapeutic. It's good for the it's mind nice. as well, mm -hmm. isn't it? Good for your mindset. And so, there's more and more groups, I was going to say, as well. Yeah, there around, is. Isn't there? Well, soldiers have to you know, take care of their kit and sew buttons on and you know, yeah. fix things. So, it's, you know, men be men. Yeah. So when I do a uh, hand up care, I'm just going to do like a I do my stitches about a quarter of an inch apart. Okay. A little bit tighter where the, um, there's a raw edge. So obviously mm -hmm. I'm here in between the leaves, so my seam allowance isn't quite a quarter of an inch. Right. But I just use my needle to turn over my raw edge underneath. Just do a mm -hmm. quarter of an inch. And just do a small stitch. Do you want to do like a, almost like a ladder stitch? Mm -hmm. Just straight into where you came out. Okay, yes and as small a stitch as possible so that you don't really see them. Yeah. So again, with it being hand stitch, and this again would be like if, um, the reason I use this as an example is because the few ladies I've spoken to do. Mm -hmm. But if say you were like having to go into hospital for an operation oh, or yes. you're having to rest or something, this would be a great project because it would give you something to do and it's hand stitch and you can't yeah. obviously, if you're in hospital, take your sewing, well, no. I'm sure people probably would. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't need to take your sewing machine. You could mm -hmm. take, it's all quite condensed, isn't it? Yeah. You could do, you get like your own little table light to go on your table and things. So. It is, or if you're going on holiday, on a coach yes, trip or something I do like that. that. Yeah. So it's, it's handy, or mm -hmm. you sat in the car waiting for the kids or something. Yeah. Although I know you might need a table for it, but you've got the idea of it, yeah. too. I do um, hand piecing, American hand piecing, so it's not like English paper piecing. You don't have the papers in between. Right. So I do that. I always have one of those projects on the go, so that if I need to grab it, go yeah. anywhere, I've always got something that I can yeah. take with me. That's cool. yeah. I've started thinking more about that because it's so sad these days because everyone you see now has got their head in the phones. Yeah. They're just like, oh. and it's like, do something creative. Yeah. 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 So that's the, the hand applique. And then for the quilting, you've got options. Okay. So on the original one, I've done echo quilting, which is a quite traditional way of quilting a Hawaiian quilt. Right. So what that means is that I've quilted lines to echo the shape of the quilt. Right. Of okay. the pattern. Yes, I'm with you now. So you've yeah. gone around it. Yeah, and then you just do the, exactly the same um, quarter of an inch or half an inch apart. And was that like. hand stitching yeah. again? Yes. That was all hand done. And then for the blue one, I've actually done a meander on the machine with leaves. Okay. So it's a meander oh, nice. with leaves. For those you don't draw on, is that just a bit free motion you just yep. go for it? Yeah. Right. Yep. To get brave. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can also free motion the echo quilting if you want as well. Right. Do it okay. that way. Right, we've got yeah. about 10 minutes left okay. with you. Ooh. Right. Let me see, what else can I show you? Yeah, so these bits where, if you're hand piecing, yeah. all these bits that have been trimmed, which are going to be... You just poke them all yeah, underneath. Yeah, you just poke them underneath. And, then and just you just use your needle to um, put them underneath and as you're going around stitching, basically. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Fabulous. So, with... Um, we should go back to this one. Mm -hmm. So you've got enough for it, do you say, to do the binding round it as yep. well? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, trying to think of anything, other tips. Yes, because you've got lots of tips. Yeah. <laughs> um. That was, I should tell you what you might want to go through. Again, that was a good tip. You know, you said about folding it up like a snowflake. So that's oh, a traditional yes, way. Yes, I know yes, you, yes. you mentioned it earlier. I did. But people have just tuned in. Okay. There is another way of, of doing now it. Now people have seen you do it, they mm -hmm. might think, Oh, actually, what was the snowflake? Yeah. Why again? <laughs> right, I'll show you. I'll show you on this piece of fabric, although we need to imagine that we're just using the, um, the coloured piece that has a bond yes. web on it. Yeah. So if I had the green one with just a bond web on the back, mm -hmm. what I would do, once it's all bond webbed, I would fold it in half, yeah. like that. Fold it in quarters. and then fold it across like that, like you're doing a snowflake. Yeah. And you take your, your pattern, which fits directly in there now. Nice. 
then you can mark your pattern on yeah. the bondo web and then you can cut it cut out yeah right. while it's still folded yes and then and when it's you, like that because yeah. that when you used to make those little men paper chain exactly dolls, wasn't yeah. It? And they, yeah exactly like that and that's the traditional way of doing a hawaiian quilt that very yeah. often you'll just get that pattern and then you need to fold up your fabric and because yes. you don't usually use a bondo web that's not the traditional method of no. doing it so they would just fold up their fabric and cut it the thing is because you've got these folds in here when you open it up each section may not be exactly the same yeah. as each other yeah so you may end up with a bigger um, pomegranate somewhere right. or leaves that are, don't quite match so maybe for your first project mm -hmm. first time don't and then maybe yeah. i mean again you could always use a bit of old fabric mm -hmm. spare and fabric try it and try See it, how it yeah, yeah, again yeah. once you've got the template you can mm -hmm. use it again can't you yeah and that's also the way if you wanted to make your own um, hawaiian design that's how you would do it as well Right. So when I made this, what I did was I um, actually had newspaper, so broadsheets newspaper. Oh, okay. So I have a nice big piece of, of paper yeah. to, that would easily fold. And then I would draw my design, fold it all up, draw my design how I wanted it, cut it out and open it up to see how it looks ah. before I actually went onto the fabric. Yeah. So with, with doing that, I actually was able to like, oh no, actually I want to move that leaf a little bit more yeah. here or that's a little bit too much space in that bit yeah so, yeah so I was able to do that. It. yep I like so that's it. the way you would do that yes very nice very yeah. nice so with the instructions as well step by step aren't they very clear mm -hmm. explaining everything again with all this project is prepping first isn't it it's Prep's a lot of prep key. yeah and then it's just the the sewing around basically yeah um, another thing you could do is if you wanted to do a medallion quilt so you could start the medallion quilt yeah which would just be your bit in the middle um, what some ladies I've known have done is called a round robin. Oh, well, ah, right. Yeah. Tell us what a round robin round is. Robin then, is. I like this. Yeah, so a round robin is a, it's a group of ladies that make a quilt top mm -hmm. and they do, each person does a little bit. Yes. So you typically start with a medallion middle, yeah. whichever you want. So medallion middle is, a, is one big block that goes centrally. Yeah, so you could use this. Yeah, you could use applique or piece or whatever you'd like. And then they send that to the first person who adds a border. Oh, of their lovely. own design yeah and then that gets sent to the next person who then adds another border and oh, then another wow. person who adds a border so every person adds one little bit to their oh, to the quilt nice. shop i love yeah. that that's a great idea mm -hmm. um love it and that's something that you could do if you're in like a ladies group together mm -hmm. or something like a quilting yep. or a sewing club or something that'd yeah. be nice or to for, do it yeah. and then have it as a charity mm -hmm. thing it's another good way of ladies or quilters rather yes who <laughs> live remotely so um, it's very com common in america because there's so much space you don't always have groups that you can get to yeah so it keeps quilters together across the distance so you can just mail it to whoever yeah, you need to that's nice you don't have well, to yeah. be you know nearby so you could actually send it across the world yeah and get it back and yeah. you know you'd have fabrics that were from the other side of the world oh, wow yeah. yeah i'd have to be the person that got it at the end who has yeah. it at the end um they, they typically do? do it for um either they do it for a particular person or you know maybe they do several so that everybody gets one at the end yes. so then they just yes. keep rotating keep around yeah 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 nice way for a charity thing if there's like a ladies group uh, yeah sorry a sewing group um you know you could do it for charity yeah raise money sort of mm -hmm. thing yeah ah so this is a very very traditional isn't it because yeah um a lot of history behind the hawaiian there quilting, is. isn't it? Um, the other way that Hawaiian quilts are typically done, so this is, I'm cutting my coloured fabric mm -hmm. and appliqueing it down. Yeah. The other way that Hawaiian quilts are done is reverse applique. Oh, right. How would that be? <laughs> so instead of marking your design on your coloured fabric, yeah. you would actually put your coloured fabric underneath your white one and mark right. your design on the white. Ah, right. Okay. Then and then, yeah. And then you'd baste it, stitch baste it so that those two fabrics are together. And then you would cut it out. Um, like I did here, and then needle turn it underneath, reverse oh, applique. Oh, right. Which I is was having even, a quick look at that earlier. Yeah. Wow. Ah, so there's loads of different, tip and different tips and tricks and things yeah. to do. Yeah, but typically the Hawaiian pattern is uh, like a snowflake. Yes. So you can do anything, but that's the typical, um, what you'd call a Hawaiian quilt. Yeah. Ah. So you've got so repeats. Once you've finished doing all your stitching round it, is then yeah. you just put your body layer underneath it, it, layer yeah. it up. Yeah. Layer it up quilt it as you'd want and then bind it or using it in a medallion or however you'd yes. want to, to you use it. end up with. Yeah, with that. With It'd be a, also be a good quilt as you go. Yes. So you could um, do a medallion, do it mm -hmm. quilted and then add your borders, add borders quilt as you go. Yeah. So you well. can use that as, say, like, as your template, as your middle and then yeah. elaborate round and things. Yeah. 
Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Oh, marking it out first, we gave you um, it was a little uh, oh. Prim Love pen. Uh, yes. Let's borrow that. Is that the pen? This is a is friction the... pen. Um, oh, a fr I think it was on. Oh, yes. Here we go. Yeah. There we go. It's just that a marker, um, just so you can mark that through. There, I'll just pop that on the screen. These are just all handy little extra bits that you, you know, when you come to do it, you suddenly might yeah. think, oh, I need something to, to mark it out. So that's your Prim Love marking pencil that you've got there. Yeah. Really handy to use there. You get two white cartridges with that one. And an eraser as well. There you go. Right. So they go, how long? So if you were doing this on the machine, how would mm -hmm. you say as a the quickest time you could it depends how long if you're doing because i've done it on um, like evenings mm -hmm. i actually started cutting it out last monday yeah no wednesday yeah so i finished it between wednesday and last night wow and you're extremely busy as well <laughs> <isn't you? laughs> yeah so that was mostly working out on the evenings basically yeah evenings yeah but that's the thing i think a lot of people now that it's not got the christmas rush and things a lot of people are just after a nice leisurely project sometimes yeah. you don't want something that's going to take months and months sometimes we want quicker ones to do and this is probably like an, a mediocre one isn't it so yeah take you forever to do yeah. so you could do that in between a big quilting exactly project, for example. and it gives you a nice taster of a hawaiian quilt so if mm. you want to see is this technique for you you can try it on something small rather than going yeah. massive quilt first yeah. off because you could get four of those yeah yeah couldn't you and do yes people are multi-buying actually so that's probably what they're yeah they're going to be doing mm -hmm. right uh, Emma, you're back in your 11 o'clock hour, aren't yes. you? We've got this. Yeah. Can we show this here? There we go. Oh, <laughs> it's just at the wrong angle there. <laughs> so we've got the bird quilt. So thank you very much, you're Emma. Welcome. I'll see you at 11 o'clock. Okay. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Not, no, don't go anywhere. Do go anywhere. <laughs> go and get yourself a cup of tea. <laughs> Viewers, we say don't go anywhere. <laughs> right, so... Let's have a look then at the most popular one is the green. So let's have a look. Shall we open up? Over half the stock has been confirmed on this. It was the red that was popular before. Now it's gone to the green. <gasps> wow. Look at that. Gorgeous, isn't it? Look at that. So you're getting a metre of this and a metre of the ivory one as well. There we go, lovely print, it's got that lovely tie-dye print to it, hasn't it, a lovely feel. There we go, so you're getting the green, so you're getting a metre of this, and then you've got a metre of the ivory, and then also you've got your two packets of your bonder web, and then you've got your two threads in there as well, so in this one it's the green and the ivory, and then you've got all the step-by-step -step instructions. Remember, Emma um, designed this exclusively for us, go right shall I show you the instructions there we go right here's the instructions here so it's all step-by-step -step instructions in there shows you what you're doing in there there we go ah, we'll have a look inside nice and clear and you've got there as well the template There we go. So this is nice. If you've not done anything like this before, um, it's well worth trying. It might be a new project that you're after, trying something. It's, um, you know, it's different, Hawaiian quilting. Now, if you do want more bonder web, we've got it on a roll as well, which might be handy if you're going to do a lot. So um, if you wanted to get a bit more for any applique, what's great with it being on a roll, again, is you've got five metres of it, but you've got really nice lengths so you can might be easier and it's less fiddly on a roll I'd say as well depending obviously on what design you don't have to do it in strips then as such so you've got your uh, bonder web there that one is a big roll you've got uh, five meters by 30 centimeters so you've got a lot on there right the next popular one we've got now is with the blue they keep changing these in order because the red one was so it's just um back and forth I love this Paul likes this one as well let's Ooh. I love this because you're getting like a contrast on here. It matches my top. There we go. So with the fabric as well, you're getting a metre of each. And like we said, you've got enough to make one. You'll have spares, but you won't have enough to make two. And uh, we're saying I should have got Emma to double check, actually, you, um, to re reiterate it. It's don't even try to make two, basically, is what uh, we were saying earlier. Because you don't want to end up short. I mean, you can't. I was just saying don't. You can try, but 
which I'm just being straight with you. <laughs> I just like to tell you as it is. Uh, there you go. You've got your two threads in here as well. There's the bundle. So as I say, in your bundle, you've got your two packs of bondo web. You've got your uh, instructions. You've got your, a meter of your blue fabric. And you've also got your uh, ivory in there as well. Um, shall we have a look at the red one? I do like the red one. I'm torn. I keep changing my mind because I like the green. I love the blue. Then when we saw the green one, I like the green. And then now the more I hold up the red, I'm like, oh, maybe it's the red. Oh, I, I'm stuck. I think this works well with my top. <laughs> right, so here we go. Look at the red. It's your choice, your design. What do you fancy? Where are you going to put this? If you're going to use it as a wall hanging, you know, you must have an idea. Where do you think it's, where would you like it to go? What will it go with? It's just nice for the summer as well. All three colours have got that Hawaiian feel to them as well. There we go. If you like traditional techniques and things, it's a great one to try and have a go at. Um, you know, say it's all about, you know, it's that large um, applique that you're doing. And it, is it something different? And if you've not quilted before, if you're new to quilting, because this is a bit different, again, anyone can, say anyone, you can do this. You can, can be beginners, but if, um, as Emma was saying, if a beginner is doing it, it's not recommended hand stitching. You can, if you want. Hello, welcome back to the Sun Quarter with me, Becky Blees. Uh, thank you for tuning in today. Now we've got another great hour where the fabulous Emma Bradford is back. And we're going to be doing two, we've got two different things today, uh, which is great. We've got the hexagon quilt um, and we've also got the reverse applique traditional bird quilt as well. I have not seen the bird quilt, so I'm really excited for that. The hexagon quilt I actually love because I've seen this and I've done this and um, uh, yeah, it's something that I can do, so I'm quite, I'm, I'm again doing my usual, people are like, what are you looking at? We've got it on the wall over here. So, let's show you, which, should we show you the, he uh, see the hexagon? So we're going to do the hexagon quilt first, have a look at that, that is gorgeous. What I love is the colours that you've got in there, those, what, the, oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And what's nice with this, you've got a lot of freedom with this quilt as well. Um, so it's your modern hexes quilt kit fabric. Um, you've got the Tula Pink hexagon pack. Now I love um, Tula Pink. Now you're getting 84 hexagons in this kit, which is just incredible. All pre-cut for you. And you've got all, oh, I love her range in here that you've got like lots of, you'll probably recognize a lot of the colors. You've got all like the shells. It's all like the, uh, is it Stormy at Sea? Got little anchors and stars and things. So you've got 84 of them, two packs of those. And then you've also got all your instructions that come with it. And you've got your thread. This is from, the, oh, sorry, not the Stormy Sea, but it's a Zuma range that it's from. Uh, you've got your two threads as well. Now, in terms of fabric, you've got four meters in total um, of fabric. So you're getting three meters of the white and you're getting a metre of the sapphire, are we calling this? Sapphire. There we go. And that's it as a collection, what you're getting. So we're going to be showing you two demos on this today. This one, I'll, with the quilt, with the hexagon one, it is a great project, I would say, if you are quite new maybe to it as well. There we go. Christmas tree is not included on this. But the first project that we're going to do is the reverse applique. So that one's coming up second. So we're going to do the um, reverse applique bird first. Ooh, now let's have a look at this. I've not seen this, I'm really excited with this one. We're gonna show you the green one first. Now, in this one, you are getting your Tula Pink Sea Glass reverse applique quilt. So you've got, oh, look at that. I love, oh. one of my favorite fabrics is Tula, um, well, it's Tula Pink. I just love the colours, I love the vibrant in there, the vibrancy that you get in there, the design that you've got in there. So you're getting that, you're getting, is it a metre of this one and two metres of the, metre and a half of each you're getting. So you've got white and then you've got your sea green, so the sea glass, sorry, so this is from the Zuma range as well. So that 
Shall we have a look? There you go. There's, there are stingrays hidden away in here. You can spot the animal. Right, let's find the stingray. Do, 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 do. That's what she loves to do, hide them away. Where? Ah! There. Oh, there. There it is. That's what she does too, look at it. I love it. She always puts animals hidden away in her work, which is great. It's that spot it. So it's spot the stingray today. There we go. So it's a um, metre and a half of each. And this is what you can achieve at home. Now, you'll get your thread. Now, if you want um, a different one, we've got the red and white version of this as well, a plain version. So that is just a metre and a half of the red and also a metre and a half just of your white that you've got in there. That'd be very bold, that won't it? Very striking. And then you've got your red thread there. Ah. And if that's not what you want, we've also got more tulip pink and we're oh. Nice, nice, nice. Hmm, I think this would be my favourite. Look at that. So you've got a metre and a half. All those little anchors that you've got around there. Again, this is from the Zuma range. Look at that. And that is the aquamarine high tide reverse. And then you've also got uh, a metre and a half of black. Oh, that would be a real... Uh, that would look completely different. So you can get three. So you've got a metre and a half of the black. You'll get a com you've got three complete different looks there that you're going to be making out of those quilts, which is amazing. Three complete different looks. So it's cho your choice what you want to go for. Obviously, you're getting the instructions in here as well. Now, let's go over. I think we've got everything over here. Hello, Emma. <laughs> Have you had a cup of tea? Yes. God, <laughs> God. Right then, so I've not seen the, the bird no. one. No. I'm quite excited with this one. What is it? How, what level is it on then? Um, sort of intermediate, intermediate, I would say. Yeah. I was going to say, I've been having a look at yeah. this earlier with you and I was like, yeah. It's a mm -hmm. And I'm just going to do a shortened version of the instructions today because we yes. actually did the full thing last Sunday right. with John. Okie dokie. Yeah. Uh, but to give you a little bit of background of the actual quilt, so the original one was red and white. Yes. Which is a very traditional colourway. I was going to say that yeah. really is, it? yeah. It is. And the quilt itself was designed, so there was a challenge to um, make a new quilt, or a new smaller quilt, based on an old vintage quilt. Okay. And the old quilt that this one was based on was a pattern called Robbing Peter to Pay Paul. Okay, oh, right, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's also red and white. Yeah. And then the blocks on it are... Um, whatever's red on one block, it's going to be white on the other yeah. and reverse, so it's, it interlocks basically. Oh, we've got a red, uh, red and white one there on the screen. Yeah, so that's the original one. That's the original. Yeah, so I thought I'd do something similar, but I've always wanted to do a tessellation, and that's what this pattern is called. Yes. Um, so that's what I did. Right. So I'll start with the pattern. Okie doke. So this is my original template. Yeah. So in the instructions, you'll get a template for a bird. Yeah. Which is template there. Yeah. And how that came about was I started off with a four inch square yep. piece of card or template plastic. Yes. And then to make a tessellation, what you do is you draw into the shape on one side and on the other side. So both sides together. Okay. And then you cut out that piece and then you attach it to the opposite. Ah, right. So whatever you cut out of here, you'll add to here. Add whatever to you that. cut out here, that's how you make your shape. I like that. Yeah, so if you wanted to do something other than a bird, you might have a play with making a tessellated quilt with a yeah. different design. Oh. Maybe you could do a, a fish or a stingray or something to oh, match. Well, yeah, yeah, match the uh, mm -hmm. pink fabric. Yeah, so that's right. the starting point. Now the technique is a little bit different. Um, as you can see, I've already layered this up. Oh, we're so do that's what you do first then, or not? No. no. So the first part is your two coloured fabrics. Yeah. You need to bond a web together. Okay. So that's what I've done. So I've got a red underneath and a white on top. Mm -hmm. I applied the bond a web to the white. Yeah. So that the paper side was on the white. On the white, yeah. And then peeled the paper off and then attached it to the red. Okay. Now, if, because you've got solid colours on this one, it doesn't matter right side, wrong side. Mm -hmm. But for the green one, if you've got a patterned one and for the black and blue, yes. you want to make sure that your bottom colour is facing up. Facing up, okay. Yeah, so your patterned side, your right side, is going to be up towards the bonder web. Okay, yep. right, so remember that if you're yep. using the green or oh. the yep. black. 
Thank you, Laura. I've got the roll here. Yeah, and you will need, um, it'll take two, it's a 36 inch square. Yep. So the first thing I did was, out of the two meters, sorry, the one and a half meters mm -hmm. of each, what I did was I folded my fabric in a corner. Yeah. So that I ripped, I cut a piece oh, that was, riffing, yeah, I like the ripping. <laughs> um, you basically want a piece that's as long as it is wide. Yeah. So if you do that with your selvage edge, sort of fold it into a triangle yeah. and rip it across the edge, that would give you enough. And you've, then you've got enough also to do the binding afterwards. Yeah. So don't worry, you won't be short. So you've got your squares, you put your bonder web on the top fabric. It yeah. is important that you attach it to the top one. And then you bonder web them both together. Both. Okay. Then. Handy that bonder web on the roll as well, isn't it? So yeah. if people want that, you can get that on our it website nice. as well, the roll of bonder web. Um, then you need to mark the top. So if, I think if I, if I was doing the black and blue one, yeah. I would actually put the blue one on top and the black underneath. Yes, because we say marking on that would be, yeah. Uh, yeah, tricky. <laughs> or if you've got a yellow pencil or a white pencil on the black, that would show up yeah. quite well. You could do that. Um, first thing I did was a 36 inch square all the way around yeah. and to do that I used my big ruler yeah. and I also had a square 12 and a half inch one that I used For that. to make it a little bit longer okay. and that also helps to make sure that you've got them nice and straight and square as yeah. well. So I did that all the way around. The next step that you do is I've marked dots inside my square. Ah yes, I can see those. Yeah, four inches apart. Okay. And those are just to help me line up my template. Right. Because you can just go ahead and put your template on in one corner and just start. Yeah. Um, I've had some ladies who did that and the birds went a little bit askew. Okay. So if you want that, that's fine. Yeah. But if you want it to be quite regimented. Yes, then you want to yeah, do, make your sure markings, yeah. do your markings. So you literally, I've just lined up, let's see, do the set. Two, three, four. Got my four inches, marking it up with my dot there. There we go. And then literally, I just do a dot in the corner. A dot. And then, oh, actually, they're there. That's why it's not going there. Ah. <laughs> 20, 16, 12, 8. And, and that's four. done with the friction pen, isn't it? Yep, the friction pen, so that will go away when I iron it. With heat, yes. Yeah. And then on your template, you can see it easier on this one because I've got still got the corners of my Yes, square. that's handy that to have that in there, isn't yeah. it? You could draw it on your template as well, just draw a four inch square so you've got that. Yeah. Um, what I did. Ah, was, so you'd line that up. Yeah, then. just line Brilliant. it up to the corners. Oh, I'd do that, I'd mark it on. Yeah, just helps to keep it. And you just draw around your template. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> okay, right. Now this is a quilt because you're you've bonded webbed your fabrics together. You yeah. want to cut away. Okay. A lot of ladies or a lot of quilters were yelling at the television last weekend. Uh, it's not going to work. Yes. It's going to stick. But it did. It will. It will. Yeah. If you do find that you've got a little bit of bonded web. Um, adhesive stuck to your patterned fabric, what you can do is lay a damp tea towel over the oh, top yeah. with a warm iron, press on top of the tea towel just to try and lift that right. off. But I've never had a problem with any residue. Um, You've not? No. No. So you just mark, mark the whole quilt with your bird template. There we go. They just interlock into each other. Ah, so that might. Yeah. Coming together. Yeah. Okay, round it goes. There. And then what you're going to do is you're going to stitch the ones you want to keep and cut away the ones you don't. So oh, every right. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. right. So I every alternate now. one is yes. going to be cut away and every alternate one is going to be stitched. Okay, and you'd cut that away with scissors? Yes. Right. But before I do that, before I stitch anything, what I did was I go around and I mark every you alternate mark. one with, right. so that I know those are ones that I don't want to keep, yeah. but this will be one that I want stitch around. Keep. Yeah. Oh, that, yes, because that is something you probably don't want to make a mistake yeah. on, isn't no. it? No. Uh, just to keep you sort of in check yeah. of where you are. <laughs> Excuse me. Right. 
Now, there's a couple of ways of, of sewing it. So last week, I actually showed how to hand quilt. Right. So you, you, it was all, OK, once it's marked, mm -hmm. you layer it up. Right, OK, yep. so you mark it, then you layer it up. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, for this one, I've actually used the 505 spray. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to do some under the machine. Ah, I saw that in the last style of the 505 spray. Yeah. I knew you'd like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, that. I did that actually on the Hexies as well. Yes, you did. Yeah. I think I actually said, yep, that's what I know you like that. <laughs> yeah, I do like that. Especially for if you do it under the machine. So for hand quilting, you'd layer it all up and yeah. then put it in your quilting hoop. And then what you do is you hand stitch or hand quilt just about an eighth of an inch inside your marking line yeah. on the birds that you oh, want okay. to keep. Right. Now for, for quickness, I've done it on the machine. Okay. Yeah, so please don't look at my... Uh, and actually just use a walking foot. Does it so say you, you use a walking foot? Yeah. yeah. If you're uh, very good or confident with free motion quilting, mm -hmm. you can free motion quilt it oh, okay. uh, just inside the lines. But I've actually done it with just the walking foot yeah. today. So I'm just going to sew inside this one. So I've got one. Yes, so you show. can see, yeah, you've not, yeah. Okay. Cut away. And also, so I've not seen this done before, so I want to see it. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's okay. Not what she wants me falling into the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's my foot. There's my foot. The other reason I like to hand quilt it is that sometimes I like to hand quilt in front of the telly. Oh, yes. So it makes it nice, a nice evening project. Yeah, well, that's, I think it gives you something to do. You've got like, the telly on. And yeah. I get why people like to do a lot of hand stitching. I, th I really, I really mm -hmm. do. I think it's... Well, I've been doing that with my paper piece in. Oh, yes. So again, it's just finishing, lifting it up and moving it round. Yeah, just like we did with the applique yeah. earlier. It's just a matter of, because it's a nice, it's a straight stitch, you can get a, a little bit of curve on it, Yeah. but you really need to sort of manoeuvre it. Yeah. Make sure your needle's down every time that you needle lift your foot Needle down, right, so yeah. I set it up, so needle down, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just going to finish that with a lock stitch. Now the next step, the first cut, you have to do very carefully. Okay. Yeah. As I say, the first cut's the worst. It is. I'd be like, oh no. And actually, if you start on the edge, like this one is on yeah. the edge, you can actually cut through here. So you can actually ah, get started. I feel better doing that. Yeah. And these are, um, I actually use sharp pointy scissors, but these are rounded. So they're, oh, they round, they're right. not quite as, it won't be quite as easy to cut through the bottom bit. So you'd say you want a good more pointier thing. one, is that all? I use pointy ones, but these, yeah. I'm saying it would be a be good better. thing right. because they're, there's less chance that you'll cut through the bottom with okay. these ones because they're a little bit rounded. So then you just cut literally. Is this one that you could use your duck dust scissors for? Mm, I think no, because no. you need enough of a point because you're going to cut quite close to your stitching. Yeah. So it's about an eighth of an inch. They might be a little bit too wide. Yeah. You definitely want to have a nice pair of sharp scissors for this yeah. part. Not that someone's pinched and borrowed mm -hmm. to use. Yeah. <laughs> All sorts of yeah. arts and crafts. <laughs> I'm just going to cut this bit across. And what you can do, because your scissors, in all, also, is to... Oh. Yeah, use your nice. tip to get right. underneath and really get up towards like. the stitches. So ah. it really helps to get that bundle web off as well. Yes. And actually, you could use the same technique for your applique, your Hawaiian applique, I mean. Oh, right, yeah. If you marked your pattern on the, if you bond web both fabrics together, yeah. then marked your pattern on the top, you could sew around mm. in the edge, but it would ah. be a raw edge rather than a... a yeah. Well, there isn't anything stopping you from going around after this. If you're not keen on the raw edge part, yeah. to go around and yeah, do over. a buttonhole yeah. stitch over the I was going to say, with a buttonhole stitch, you'd yeah. do over that, yeah. Or whatever. A lot of people find that if they've got 
a fancy machine, or even not so fancy, you do have some nice decorative stitches on there. Yeah, well, you could just, you, yeah. yeah, couldn't you? Exactly, you don't always use them. So it'd be a nice opportunity if you've got a nice yeah. wide decorative stitch. With my wonky cutting, I'd probably need a really thick stitch <laughs> to cover it up. And I would recommend doing the cutting part once you've sewn everything down. And if you, if you really want to sneak peek, because when I first did it, I'm like, oh, I want to see what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, I did my first one. Ah, right, yeah, because I'm, I'm like a kid in a candy shop. Yeah. <laughs> Just be careful if you do cut the first one first and you continue to sew, as if it's handled quite a lot, it might fray the edges oh, a little oh, bit Oh, okay, more. yeah. But it's not the end of the world. No, so you'll just maybe do one to have a little peek and yeah. then ideally just get the rest prepped. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I love the red in that though. I know yeah. you did that last week, didn't you? The mm -hmm. red and white. Oh, there, but I think that... Um, I really would like to try blue. the black and blue, black yes. And blue, yes. I think that would be quite nice. That'd be a nice modern take as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be so different. Yeah. Yeah, I've not seen a quilt actually with... I know it sounds different, but with a so much black in it if oh, that makes sense mm -hmm. I bet that would look <gasps> it's like yeah I've mm. done one um, that is black background and it's leaves oh wow yeah oh that it is nice fabric would look lovely in that yeah I love hair fabric at the minute that's my mm -hmm. thing <laughs> Gosh, yeah, I see what you mean, because you've got, it's all um, based, I forget you've got all the other layers underneath it yeah, as well. So so it's, yeah, so you, you quilt it as you make it, really, so yeah. it's actually a really quick one to do. So that's what you do, and then you do this next one to cut yeah. out, this next one to cut out. Cut out that yeah. one would be quilted, that one would be quilted, and you just continue. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Once it's all finished, you trim it down to the size, so yeah. 36 inches square. Yeah. You could add a little bit extra if you wanted, so you could do a quarter of an inch yeah. around the edge if you didn't want your binding to come um, onto your pattern yeah. so much. Ah, and then your bonder yeah. web is on there, that just comes out. Yeah, so you can have ah. a look. Might, oh yeah, you might see, I'll just see the shiny side. So that's, that yes. does, putting it on the top layer make, helps it to not stick to the bottom stick, yes, so much. Yes, right, yes. Because you've got most of it stuck to the top. Yeah, that's brilliant. Christine, yeah. I think, is messaging from Buckinghamshire. Good morning, Hi, Christine. Christine. She says, morning, all. Um, can you go over the reverse applique again with an iron to stick it back down after you've finished cutting it out? Question mark. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Actually, you would want to do that, especially if you used a friction pen, just to get rid of any remaining marks that you might have. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. There you go. Yeah, Thank good you for question. your question, Christine. Good question. It's one of those, I think, yeah. everyone at home will be like, ah, I'm glad someone's asked that. Yeah. <laughs> if you've got yeah. any questions, anyone, don't be shy, message in. Yeah. I won't answer them, don't worry. Now, before we move on to the hexes, I'm mm -hmm. going to move, just recap the kits. Okay. So that's that done, isn't it? it we'll is be back done. with you in a moment. Yes. yes. And again, if they wanted to see the whole thing was uh, last Sunday last with Sunday, John. Last Sunday, wasn't it, with yeah. John. So if you want to have a look, that was, yeah. um, oh, I'm trying to count back the dates. What I can't, is it like the 18th? No, 13th last Sunday was the 13th. So have okay. a look back on that. Oh, yeah. Right, I'll be back in a moment. Okay. Uh, so we're going to have a look through the kits again. Right, so let's have a look at the green one first. So that's the one that we've showed you today on the wall that you can see. So that's the Tula Pink Sea Glass uh, Reverse Applique Quilt Kit. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous green that you've got there. That's got the stingrays hidden away in there. It's there. And that's from the Zuma range. So you're getting half, a metre and a half of the sea glass. And you've also got a metre and a half of the white as well. And that will make you this incredible quilt there. Then of, we saw this one last week. Well, if you want the traditional um, colours, you've got the red and white there. Really nice and bold these colours are, aren't they? And that's the one that we've just seen. Um, again, Emma demonstrating. And we've also got a picture of that finished ki uh, quilt as well. So that's your red and white. So you're getting a metre and a half of the red and a metre and a half of the white. You've got your instructions and you've also got your thread there with that as well. 
Then, if you want something, I would say this next one is, it's different, this one, and I love it. Um, oh, this is on I'd get just because of the colours, because of the black. And um, again, it's from the Zuma range, it's Tula Pink. With the dark background, it is going to look amazing. Oh, Emma, you need to make this. <laughs> I need to see it. <laughs> um, so that's your aquamarine high tide reverse. If somebody, um, if people get this and make it, please, 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 can you either send me a picture in here or when I'm next on or send it to me on my Facebook because I, here's the email address to the studio, studio at sewingquarter.com because I really want to see that one. That would just be... I really want to see that. Send me any of the pictures all the time because I love looking at them, but I want to see that. Now, we actually saw this quilt was shown yesterday. I bought this to you before Christmas because we were looking at hexes, I believe, yesterday. This was a really, really popular quilt. It's something. It's a little bit different as well. It's a modern hexes quilt kit. Um, you've got, again, the fabrics from Tula Pink. You've got eight, is it 82 or 84? I always forget. 84 in total. So you're getting 42 in each pack, all from the Zuma range, which is beautiful. So you've got them, you've got the hexagon template in there as well. And then you've also got two metres of the sapphire blue and two metres of the white in that kit there. And then you've got your instructions and that will make you, sorry, a metre of sapphire, then three metres of the white. Sorry, my error there, a metre of sapphire. And that will make you that which is what we're going to have a look at now, which is gorgeous. So I'll take my instructions and off we trot back over. It's like another show again, Emma. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> right, we've got just under half an hour. Okay, that's perfect. You're going to make the whole thing. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> yeah. No, I really like this one. This one was really fun. It was. I remember we did this just before we Christmas. We did, we and did. I loved it because yeah. you showed me some lots of little tricks and tips mm -hmm. again didn't you so yeah. right so this is your pack of hexes that you'll get yep in your pack of hexes like you said you've got a handy dandy already mm -hmm. made cardboard already template so what i did was on this one you can see some of marked and some i've cut off you actually mark your seam allowance around yeah. the edge um you can do a quarter of an inch this one i've made just i think three eighths of an inch yeah. just to give me a little bit more wiggle room because when you do fold them over it doesn't give you a huge amount so no if you're a little bit more generous on your seam allowance, they'll be yeah, nice. Yeah, a bit more, yeah. yeah. So you literally just, like I said, mark a line. So mm -hmm. I did three-eighths of an inch all the way around, and you literally just cut, cut it off. Snip away. Yeah. What size are these hexagons again, then, these ones? Do we know? Yeah. Good question, because there's a way of measuring hexes that yes. I can never get my head around. So is it two and a two and a half because they measure the two and a half edge? Oh, believe they're four point seven five. Okay. That's okay. not me just getting Paul said four point seven five. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. So then that would be from tip to tip. Tip to tip, yeah. Yeah. Some measurements on hexes they actually go the, the length of the, the length. edge. Yeah. Like the, so, it's a nice big hexy. It's nice. Yeah. Generous hexy. Great, I love them. Yeah. <laughs> I also love the patterns that are in there. I know, they're oh, really nice. Um, glue <coughs> stick, the glue stick that we all love. Yes, I, I love, love that glue as stick. well. It's it's my, my piece thing, it makes life a lot easier, mm -hmm. isn't it? You can ditch if you want to do it that way. But it just makes it nice, yeah. yeah. And especially for this, because um, it is a nice, quick way of doing the hexes rather yeah. than English paper piecing. It is nice to have a little yeah. shortcut, basically. Yes. To be fair, that's how I do it. I do like the blue pen and that's yeah. how I... I've done it, like, when I... Um, Lucy Brennan that taught me and she mm -hmm. made me do the stitching. She's uh, like, you've got to do some. And I was yeah. like, yes, but I like the glue. She's like, I do. Yeah. Well, it's one <laughs> um, of those... But it is, you've got to do it. I mean. Yeah. Um, one of my rules is there's no right or wrong way, only the way no. that works for you. So it could be, you know, using the glue is great, but you don't want to do it every single time. Yeah. So there are certain projects where it makes sense, but some where you want to actually yeah. just do the whole hog. What I'm going to do is put a little dot of glue just on the edges. You only need middle. a little bit of that glue as you well do. as I found out. Yeah. I'm going to use my hexi underneath template, so I'm going to fold over the first one. Yeah. So give me my quarter of an inch allowance. So I'm lining up that folded edge with the edge of my hexi. Yeah. There, just like that. There we go. Prepared. 
Once that's done, do the next one. If you wanted to do it um, sewing it, you could actually put your hexi inside yeah. and do it around that way. Could you glue the hexi inside it as well? No, because you, you've only got a couple uh, of hexes. Yeah, yeah, so you need to use not, it for yeah. each one. I'm thinking if you've got loads of the paper one, but well, yeah, no. Yeah. And using the hexi, I mean, you don't have to use the hexi, but it's nice to have a template so that all your hexes are roughly the same yeah, size. Yeah, well, that's the thing, because they will probably... Yeah, if you're doing, doing them. Yeah, yeah, if you're doing quite a lot well. of them at once, you can often get some that are quite have a smaller seam allowance, some yeah. larger. Yes. At least I do. I find if I'm sitting there doing a task for a while, they eventually they, they'll probably start shrinking, yeah. get bigger seam allowances as I go along. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can get those glue pens as well on our website. Have yeah. you got them in stock at the minute, Paul, or are you? It's just, just check the web. They're in and out of stock all the time, though, so yeah. they're so popular. Yeah, nice. You can get refills for them as yes, well. Yes, you can. Which is really nice. Yeah, there we I go. had to buy one from a shop. I, didn't, I couldn't buy one from here because I left it too late and they didn't oh, have any no. in. Yes, cost me more money. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. So that's what your hexi will end up looking like. Yep. So all your um, seam allowances have been glued to the other side. Yep. Looks like that. Way all nice. Yep. Love it. Now the next thing to do is your, you're actually going to layer up. I've only got a sample here. Yep. But you'll want to layer up your whole quilt. Yep. Beforehand. So you do it the full size then? Yes, you get full size. And there were the lengths of fabric that you get. So the top on that one was actually two lengths of white sewn together. Right. This is where I found about out, you about ripping, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. In this show last time, I yeah. remember now. Yes. So I took my full yardage of um, white, yeah. folded it in half lengthways, and where it was in the middle, I just snipped and ripped. Snip and rip. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and then um, you'd need to trim your, well, you can either trim your selvage edges off yeah. and then sew those two sides together, or you can leave them on and sew along, but right. it depends, it's preference. Again. It is, yeah. Yeah, the reason to take off the selvage edges is that they're woven right. a little more tightly, so they, they just have a different feel to them. So okay. They might behave a little bit differently from the rest of the fabric right. after you wash it and things, so personal preference. So. Um, so layer it up. Yeah. Uh, I use the 505 spray to layer it up. Yes. So backing, wadding. That's uh, handy as well. We've had that in earlier. That's handy to have again. It in is. Kit, it's it? nice. Yeah. It's just a handy, especially, I really like it for machine, for domestic machine quilting. Yeah. Because it just keeps all your layers together. You don't have yeah. to worry about pinning and... It doesn't harm your machine. No, yeah. exactly. Right, so. So once I've got it all layered up, the next mm -hmm. step that I did, I'll take some of these off because they're not all sewn on was I marked a grid. Okay. Doke. And that was just for reference. Yeah. So, so I, would you use a marker pen that disappears again? Yes, when you're so on friction. It? Yeah. friction. Use my friction one. pen again. And so I did them four and a half inches apart, right. all the way across, or four inches apart. I think on the actual instructions, it's eight inches. Okay. But you've done it four. Yeah, just so you've got a few more yeah. on here. Oh, so you just mark just mark it out yeah yeah all out and it's like i said it's just for reference you're not actually going to line up your hexes on top of that but it's just so you, you've got yeah. somewhere to um refer back to refer, yeah and then you just lay your hexes wherever you want you see that's what i love with this one as well because it is it's up to you isn't it you yeah. can follow or you can mm -hmm. have a good play around yeah. yeah and you can lay them all down um however you want before you stitch them down yeah so you're going to pin them before you stitch them. Yeah. So there's nothing, or you can you can glue if you want to. Yeah. But pinning makes it easier to move them around if right, you want yeah. to. So what I did was I used my little ruler, so a smaller ruler, and I made um, each hexi a quarter of an inch apart. Yeah. So I laid them down so there's about a quarter of an inch all the way around them mm -hmm. to make it even. And then if there was anywhere that I wanted a gap, so if I didn't want to add hexi <laughs> actually here in the middle, I just used my template. Ah, it's a block. Yes. I like it. So that's just my space marker so that I yeah. know when I go to lay my next one down, it's, I would then yeah. do half an inch 
and light up. Yeah, I think we said as well last time you can taking photographs is good as well because yes. you can set it all out, take a photograph, see especially how you like phones it. these days. Not mm -hmm. like you've got to wait for them to develop or anything, no. but take a photograph, then you can have a look and see if you think that works, and then you might want to. Yep. change it around a bit exactly and also once you do have it in a space that you want um, take a picture so that you know where your hexes are if, yes. if any fall off which well yeah yeah i didn't quite pin mine as well as i should have and there were some loose but yeah. then i could just go back to my phone and see oh okay that one went there yeah. that one went there so there and again because the colors are all quite striking and stand out it'd mm -hmm. be easy to to re put them back together yep so then you just pin them wherever you'd want Right, we've got 20 minutes. Okay. Short 20 minute countdown. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do one more. Say over here. Ah, I like that one, like the flower style, isn't it? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. And like I said, with the lines, so you can see where this hexi sits on this line. Yeah. You can kind of line up this hexi to be similar. Yeah. In a similar space. So I'm just going to move that over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, it's up to you what you do with colour, because you'll have all your hexes done, so mm -hmm. you can almost put them all in piles of the oh, same colour, can't you? Yes. And then go, right, so let's... Mm -hmm. Which is what I did with those. I first, actually, these one I'm mixed and matching, obviously. Yeah. Which is what I started doing with the original quilt. But then I'm like, oh, actually, because I really like the rainbow effect. I like what you've done there, yeah, because yeah. it just merges through. Mm -hmm. Or you could... The thing with Taylor Pink's fabric, though, because it's fun, you could literally just have a splurge of it. Yes. Every, you could just have a... Yeah. Everything, couldn't you really? Just mm -hmm. thrown in there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So once I did all that, the other thing I did was I marked my quilting lines okay, with my friction pen. And I just did straight diagonals. Right. Uh, so you're going to use those to sew directly through all the layers yes. and then across your hexes right. as well. That's where you sew over the pins, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what foot would you use for sewing oh, over? Yes. Just good question. Uh, walking foot. Walking foot. I, was, I nearly yeah. said, would you use a walking foot? Yeah. I, I should have. <laughs> because you're quilting. Yeah, walking foot. Definitely. And when I quilt on my domestic machine, I always increase the stitches a little bit. Oh, um, Judith from the West Midlands has messaged in. Hi, Judith. She Judith. says, loving the, uh, loving the applique. When are you going to be doing the oak leaves, wall hangings, the display? Ah, oh, we did it earlier. Oh, Judith, we did those earlier. Yeah. Um, yes, with those earlier. We've still got some kits available. That was in the nine o'clock hour. Um, so you can re-watch it. If you yep. go onto our um, website, you can, we can re-watch the shows on um, Sky, can't they? And on YouTube as well, so you can re-watch it. Just go to our web shop and then look underneath and then you've got the kit 9 o'clock hour. Or we'll be back on at 2pm again on Sky. Actually. So you can have a look at... Um, yeah, 2 o'clock it'll be on, won't it? Yeah. Yep. That's the Hawaiian quilt. Um, you'll love that, Judy. We've loads of good messages in about that. So that's it. Yeah, watch it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thank it was Judith. Good. Stop right. here. Yep. Because I wanted to show, this is where I've, so I've quilted through all my layers. Yes. And I'm going to start going across my hexi. Yep. <laughs> now you want to be careful when you go across your corner because sometimes it can rock up. Oh, yeah. So I'm just using my scissors to hold it down at the moment, but you can use your seam ripper yeah. a point or an, an awl. Just to make sure that sits nice and it's flat. Nice and flat yeah. yeah. And you just go straight across from corner to corner. Yeah. And then you've marked your lines through it as well. Yeah. And obviously if you're doing it on the big on your full size quilt, you would have your quilt sandwich all rolled up. Yes, I was gonna say it would be loads. It is yeah. I remember it is a big one, isn't it? It is. So it all rolled. Not one to really be transporting around, is it? No. <laughs> I mean, you could no. if you want, but. <laughs> so I'm just going to work on this hexi. Okay, do. You can kind of see what I've done with the other ones already. Yes. So once you've done that one, you want to sew across from corner to corner. Yeah. And on the original quilt, 
all the space in between the hexes, mm -hmm. I actually quilted along the lines as well. Oh, you did? So you can yeah. actually... Um, you've got like little he white hexagons in there, haven't you, when you look in as well? Yeah. There you can see in there. So you don't have to do one hexy, then stop, and then move to the next one. Yeah. You can just keep going just keep all the way going. across. Yep. Mm. If you want to, you can quilt the whole quilt like that. I just decided to keep it diagonal lines yes. in the back. Oh, I'm actually going to now, just so you know, this kit is quite limited. Because um, you've got two hexy packs in each one, it is quite limited. So just to make you aware of that. Oh, I'll tell you what... I Oh, sorry. Go on, sorry. <laughs> I'll tell you what I did see, actually. Um, one of the ladies on the Facebook group, she had used these to make a deck chair cover. Oh, yes. Yes, did you see that? That is amazing, yeah. 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 I, that's what I, lo I love seeing all um, everyone's projects mm -hmm. and things. It's so creative. Because um, I, I love seeing whether people are beginners or whether they're, mm -hmm. you know, advanced. I just love it. I love yeah. seeing everyone, what people are doing and things. And I think it's nice on there as well that if you're a beginner, make sure you put things on there. Because I know I've put my first thing I did on there and mm -hmm. everyone was really nice about it but I was like I'm learning <laughs> but I'll show you the email quickly you can email studio at sewingquarter.com hex is one of the most popular things so hex was the first thing I used yeah and I really like this method because it's a more modern method so you don't have to do the EPP it's a lot yes. quicker to get that um, hexy pattern yes without doing the hand sewing I need to get some more tulip pink fabric yeah but I, want, I keep going, I want to wait till I'm good at it before <laughs> I don't want to wait and go wrong. Now for that one, I actually just used my snipper on my machine, but oh, I can yeah, show you, let me get my tail up, how I did start and finish whenever I machine quilt, whenever I do it on my long arm as well. Oh yeah. I always pull my bobbin thread up. You pull it, oh right, yes. Top. It just keeps everything to the top. Yep, so it's all um, tight. No, it doesn't all get tangled up then, does yes, it? Yes, and then I can tie them off, and then I actually sew them, hand sew them, and, and bury um, them inside. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. In fact, I was talking to somebody about that the other day, and I'm glad. I know it's not for a new yeah. <laughs> random conversation. So I was like, <laughs> no, there's a, a way. I said, somebody does yeah. that where they pull mm -hmm. them up. So I just put my needle down and up again. You can actually, this is one time that you can actually lift your foot while your needle is up. Yeah. Because you will go back, because the, the bottom thread will be where your needle needs to go through. Oh, okay. So it's sort of a place marker. So I just use a pin or you can use a seam ripper mm -hmm. or something just to pull that bottom thread up. And then I'm going to put my needle back down where it was. So I've just got them both there. Yeah. Oop, foot down. And I'll just do the same here. Okay. So nice you just and you pull them off, isn't it? Yeah. So you just pull on your top thread a little bit, and it'll yeah. pull your bobbin thread Fabulous. up through. Pull it out, and then just do a little knot. A little knot. And then you can bury him. And that just, for me, it just gives me a little peace of mind that I know yes. my threads aren't going to come undone. You see, that's my thing. I would forget, and that's why I like that technique, yeah. because I would forget to do that otherwise, and then I think I've done a quilt and it'd fall apart when I yeah. watch it. <laughs> I always, so I pull them up and I always knot them right away. Yeah. But I, I'll thread them all in once the quilt is all done. Yes. And just sit and do it. Sometimes, if I'm along, I'm quilting, I'll actually because you've got different spots, I'll actually put a little masking tape ah, over my yeah. threads because sometimes it can be very difficult yeah. to see where they were. And you can have a session where you just hand stitch. You might feel yeah. that you want to not leave the machine for a bit and just do a bit of hand stitching. So. Yeah. So I'm just going to snip, I'm going to cheat, I'm going to snip these off for now just to keep them out of my way. Yeah. So the other thing that you can do if you really want it to be secure, mm -hmm. so because you've just sewn from corner to corner, so yeah, you will have a little pocket yeah. where you're goes underneath. Mm -hmm. If you're concerned about that, you can actually stitch all the way around the yeah. edge. So if it's going to be a quilt that you're going to use and wash quite a lot, yeah. that might be something that you want to think about so doing. Does, yeah. yeah. And you can use a decorative stitch as well, or a blanket stitch. I'm just yeah. going to do a straight stitch around the edge, just to make sure that's nice and secure. But that's the thing with it as well, when you're adding in your own stitching and things as well, mm -hmm. there's, like I say, so many uh, sewing machines have all different stitches and mm -hmm. things, so you can again 
personalise it, have your favourite one. Or mm -hmm. Everyone, I think, has their favourite ones they like and things. Yeah. And I'm just doing a white thread, but if you did it in a different coloured thread, Ooh. that could be nice as well. Could you use different coloured threads going through the whole thing? Mm -hmm. Mm. You can get some really nice variegated rainbow threads, which might be good. Ah, that yes, because thinking with all her bright colours, yeah. um, sorry, her tulip pink colours yeah. that she's used. <clears throat> I think you can make it as vibrant as you want, really, can't yeah. you? Or as classic, you know, again, you could recreate this quilt with more sort of floral, different patterns on mm -hmm. it if you wanted to. Yep, definitely. I just like the colours on, I like the mm -hmm. funness of this, so mm -hmm. the bright. When are you next back in here then, Emma? I'm actually back on the third. So I said oh, we're back you? together Do again. Do you know it's the same day as me? Yeah, it's a yay. Yay. Emma's like thinking, oh no. No. <laughs> I like it. It's nice getting the same person a few times because mm -hmm. you get to, I don't know, I just, I'm learning so I get mm -hmm. to learn. It's like a, I'm getting tested in a way. You know, I get to yeah. remember things. <laughs> well, it's a good job you weren't here last time because you would have learned a lot of how not to do mistakes. Oh, <laughs> What happened? Did you make a few mistakes? Um, we were doing foundation. I was doing foundation piecing, oh. which take, is tasks my brain anyway. Oh. So I do have some little tricks to make sure that I don't. But then I said, oh, make sure you, your fabric doesn't get flipped over underneath. And, yes. and that's what exactly uh, what happened. You see, you needed okay. me, then that's the only thing yeah. I can do. <laughs> <laughs> I could do other bits as well, but that's my... Uh, mm -hmm. That's my strength. If someone said do something on air, demonstrate, I'd, I'd do paper for the foundation yeah. piece. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, it should have yes. been. Um, Don't get me to do that, though, on air. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other technique you can do, once you've got them all sewn down and you've got your pockets, mm -hmm. so that you wouldn't use the um, machine stitching, no. top stitching over these, what you can do is make them look into cathedral windows. Yes, I like that look. Yeah. It's really nice, that cathedral window. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is you would just fold over your edge and either hand sew yep. or machine stitch over that. Ah. I've done a little bit of hand stitching right yes. there. Yes. Because I, I like the, the control I get with yeah. hand stitching and you can hide the, really hide the stitches really well. But then you could do another stitch if you wanted to use your yeah. machine over Yes, yeah. definitely. So I'll do a little bit of that now. There we go. It's actually a cathedral window yep. effect. Yeah, your mock cathedral window. Mock. Yeah. Do you know what we're doing on the third yet? I don't. No, I was going to try and sneak her <laughs> out. I don't either. <laughs> I do have some bits for the birthday show. I'm going to be here for the birthday show. Oh, are you? Ah. I'm in before the birthday. <laughs> to be me, what me once a month stint. I do. <laughs> so again, I'm just using my walking foot for this yeah. part. A daft question, but I'm asking just because mm -hmm. it's, I've thought of it myself. Okay. Walking foot, do a lot of those cut, do a lot of sewing machines these days come with one, or is it something that you usually have to? It buy? depends. Um, so, the last machine I bought was a specifically a quilting machine. Well, it was a quilting kit, yes. basically, so it came with all the quilting bits that you'd need. Mm -hmm. So, that one did have one. But, so unless you get one that, a machine that is like part of a quilting package, yeah. you tend to need to buy one. But okay. you can get a, a sewing, um, walking foot for any machine. Ah. Really. You just. Oh. <laughs> That's so. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Well, talk about thinking things. Yeah. Um, well, here we go. We've got. I did not expect that at all. Um, I was literally like, um, "Can you get one?" Yeah. There you go. Uh, Paul's got one there. That's why you said he went quiet. Um, yeah. So here we go. Um, if you do want to get a walking foot, um, we have got them here. There you go. So that's your Everfeed walking foot. So that would just attach then 
yeah. onto your sewing machine. So you've got a little lever that sits across, either sits inside, well, my walking foot at home has a little fork. Right. So my fork sits inside my take-up lever. Yeah. Or it sits on top. So mm -hmm. this one, it, the actual take-up lever sits on top. Okay. And every time that my needle, the needle goes up and down, what it yeah. will do is it will move the feed dogs on the top okay. and the bottom. Yeah. So what the walking foot does, it's basically adding feed dogs, feed dogs along, to the yeah. top. So that it's um, feeding through all your layers of fabric evenly. Yes. And I actually use mine for sewing jersey as well. Ah, right. Yes, I've that heard that before. So yeah. it's if um, it is worth getting one if you're yes. not. Because it just gives it, it makes it more secure, doesn't it, when you're sewing, Does. when you're quilting, especially if you're doing yeah. a lot of quilting as well. Yeah, you it? definitely need it. And it's just, to, like I said, to feed all your layers of fabric through evenly. Yeah. If you don't use one, you just use your flat foot. Because it's just feeding through the bottom layer of fabric, your top layer can wrinkle a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So and that one actually has a bar in there as well to help. So the little bar that oh, comes bar with there, it. Yeah. That has a little hole inside your side of your machine that will yeah. sit inside the throat. So you put that bar there and it just gives you another guideline. Okay. Oh, so you brilliant. know on your machine you've got like quarter of an inch, half an inch, all your guidelines. Yes, all along there. It just gives you an extra one yeah, as well. Yeah, on top of the quilt so you can actually see it because otherwise it would be hidden by all the Ah, uh, Yeah, because I was just when everything's hidden. You're like, oh. Yeah, so that's ah. what that's for is to, okay. you've got a guideline on top. Well, there you go. So there you go. You've got the walking foot there. So if you do want one, um, it is worth doing. So say it will stop things gathering up, keeps things all nice and smooth yep. and that as well. There you go. Right, four minutes. Okay. Oh, there we go. So I didn't expect the walk. I was literally just thinking, mm -hmm. ah, it would be nice. <laughs> yeah, they're handy, very handy. I'm just going to do some more. Because, like you say, you use a walking foot for the jersey as well, and mm -hmm. that. So, yep. And with this kit, it makes it nice. Like I said, um, there was a lady on Facebook who had a picture of a deck chair cover. Yes, that looks you could fun. do cushions. You could Ooh, do a bag. Oh yes. You don't have to That's do the full size yeah. quilt. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, it's it's great. Everyone's so because that's the thing with the views. They're so creative. They know yes. all those. have got all the yeah. different ideas. And I love obvious. it. I love mm -hmm. seeing them all. But it's inspiring others as well because like you, what somebody does and puts on there, someone else will look at and go, oh wow, I love mm -hmm. that. I'm gonna do it. I'm a copy of me. You get inspired. Pardon? It's inspiration. Inspiration. You get inspired. Yes, that's the word. Yeah. So are you working on any particular projects at the moment? Well, it's funny you should say that, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know what? I, I don't think I'll get it done for next time because I'm very slow. But I'm making a unicorn. Oh. Yes, I got a kit. I'm not, it's not, I've not had to do the cutting yet because where I'm struggling with is I do struggle with the measurements. I'm getting there and I'm practising. And that's mm -hmm. why cause I started with the paper piece in and I'm attacked because I'm still doing Belle's little memory blanket although oh, I'm, still, yeah. I'm still on her old vests because I don't trust myself <laughs> to use her, her best things yet. Yeah. Um, so I'm doing that, I'm just doing like little flowers and things with that but then I've got a unicorn toy because I've never done that before, oh, I got bought a kit nice. actually. Um, so I'm actually doing mm -hmm. that at the minute and that's like again sort of, it's a bit similar I suppose to quilts because it's patchwork, it's oh. a patchwork unicorn oh, so, okay. um, oh, yeah. and it's hand stitching as well um, and that's why it would take me ages but I wanted to do something hand stitching as well yeah. I've not got my own sewing machine yet I've got I borrow people's but that's my next thing that's why again with Belle's flowers it's taking ages or when I see one of my friends I'm like can I just do a few flowers <laughs> <laughs> so I've got lots of hexagons coming out my ears because I keep yeah. getting those all cut out and done so mm -hmm. yes oh we're gonna get you set up with a machine definitely yes I need a machine yeah <laughs> Because I was looking at these workshops and things that like I said before you can go to, but I want to, that's what I've held off because I want to have my oh, own to play with because yeah. you can learn other ones. Yes. Um, Although if you tried other machines, you might see what you do and don't like about them. Yes. Because they yeah, each have their own actually, little, yeah. little bits. Things, yeah. <laughs> it needs to be hard wearing with me. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit my little one at home that I take for workshops. The needle always starts on the side position rather than oh, the right. middle, Ooh. which I think if you've got the same brand but a bigger machine, there's a yeah. way of getting around that. But on mine, you can't, and ah. so amount of times I've broken a needle on my quarter-inch foot because oh, I forgot gosh. to move it across. Oh. No, I'll um, yeah, I'll have a look at um, the sewing machines and have a have a have a play with those. They scare me still. <laughs> <laughs> have you got any projects you're up to at the moment? Ooh. 
I just put my little unicorn in. <laughs> it's a shame now. No, I actually have a baby quilt that I need to do for April, May, oh. which is, I said I bought one of the bundles this morning. Yes, I think which I'm, one was that? Oh, the Cityscape. Cityscape, yeah. Yeah, I think I might use that. It's for a little girl. Oh. Yeah, somebody uh, I work with who's a year older than me. It's her first child. Oh, wow. So a very happy surprise. Oh, so, And oh, she's very, that. the lady herself is very chic. So I knew, uh, yes. So I thought those fabrics would be good because she doesn't want anything traditional. No. But, yeah. Oh, nice. So I have to do that. Oh. That'll be paper piecing. So mm. <laughs> that'll be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Have I got to wrap up, did you say? Oh, I oh. enjoyed chatting there. So yeah. all sorts then. Well, we'll pick back up on the 3rd of February. Yes. <laughs> I might have a picture of the unicorn, but mm -hmm. I don't know if it'll be <laughs> public viewing yet. Yeah. Uh, but thank you so much for showing us this again. And I'll um, I'll see you on the 3rd. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'll Take give care. you a hug now because I won't see you after. <laughs> no. Um, but have a, it's a safe trip back. Thanks. Thank you so much, Emma, and I'll see you later. Bye, Becky. Right. Off we go back over here. Right. Oh, I always get chatting to Emma at the end. I'm like, well, I could just stand and chat longer. <laughs> okay, so we, the modern hexi quilt you've just seen us do there. Us. <laughs> like Emma. <laughs> so you've got 84 pieces here at Hexagons that you're getting there in that gorgeous Tula Pink range. And they are they're from the Zuma range. Sorry, by Tula Pink in the Zuma range there. You've got a selection from all some gorgeous blues, greens, pinks there. All sort of based around the sea as well. You've got shells in there. You've got hidden stingrays anchors and things there all in there so they're beautiful and i thought they were looking at my hand there and i'm there spending ages fl <laughs> flicking through and you're looking at a still uh, right so in here you've got your two packs of your tulip pink hexagons uh, you've got your instructions and you've also got your threads in there as well for that one